بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته everyone إن شاء الله you're doing well For the last couple of years I have been doing holocaust with Revert Sisters in and around Scotland which I've truly enjoyed um, but we were running into a few issues sometimes Uh, the getting together was on and off. One of the issues we were having was that some sisters were at different levels. We would have brand new Muslim sisters and then reverts who had been Muslim for a few years. Another issue that we were facing was because the halakas were live, sometimes it was really hard to get all the sisters in one place at one time, which is normal, right? Everybody has responsibilities and duties that have rights over them. So this is my attempt at fixing that, inshallah. And when it comes to the levels, this is something I'm looking to build on, inshallah. So I've created this short but structured learning programme that hopefully is going to focus on the fundamentals, which are really important. I was... A little bit worried about it not being interactive, but I'm going to create an email for people to send um, things back to me, inshallah. Uh, and I've also created a Telegram group and I'll put all the details to that in the description below. So let's get started. So like I mentioned, the target audience for this is new Muslims. However, the topics we'll be covering um, are ones that should be revised generally. The topics will be centred around the areas of belief, practice and character. And if you want to get the most out of this course, my advice is to grab a pen and a notepad and take notes, inshallah. So today is an induction to this learning programme. We're going to be covering uh, the importance of seeking knowledge. We're going to be talking about the areas of study in more depth and the expectations that you should have on yourself whilst going through this course. And we're going to be using evidences from the Quran and Sunnah inshallah. Okay, so I want you all to take a minute and I want you to imagine a builder Let's call the builder Bob. Very original, I know. So he wants to build a house, one that is going to last him a lifetime, that was going to keep him safe and going to be the place where he finds peace and rest. And let's say this Bob came to you for advice, okay? He came to you with some choices he's thinking about, but he's not sure. I don't know, maybe you're a builder as well, right? He's looking for your expertise. So Bob gives you two choices. Option one is that he can build his house on solid ground in a nice neighbourhood. Or option two, he can build his house on a beach, but that beach is known for having quicksand. Now, I'm going to take a bit of a wild guess here, but I assume that you will say the concrete, the solid ground. Why? Because a stable home needs a solid foundation. And unfortunately, quicksand is just not going to cut it. If you build your home on quicksand, at some point it's going to sink. You know, you can't build something stable and solid on shaky ground. It has to have a great foundation. So what else does a person need to build a strong and stable home? Well, it will need a plan. It will need instructions, tools, people, experts perhaps, uh, to get them to that place. Now, I've just spent this full intro talking about hussies, about homes. But just like our homes, our hearts need to have a solid foundation. And to give your heart that solid foundation, it needs to be firm on its belief, it needs to be firm on its practice, and it needs to be firm on that striving to be better in that and to building on that, inshallah. Now, of course, this is going to take time, but it's a journey that every Muslim has to take. And I want you to think about the question, why is it important to attend courses and halakas as reverts or as raised Muslims? Well, these are going to be places that provide you with a structured approach to 
bettering your practice and developing your belief, which I think is really important for any Muslim. But to also put yourself in beneficial environments where you're able to learn and to share knowledge, this course isn't going to be enough in and of itself. But inshallah, for, for many of you, it's going to be a good starting point or revision. The Prophet wasallam said, Seeking knowledge is a duty upon every Muslim meaning both Muslim men and Muslim women. And if you brought a pen and a piece of paper, I want you to answer this question. I want you to click pause and I want you to think about how knowledge has already changed your life. I was to answer this question on a personal level, I could talk for hours and hours, you know, just the recognition of God, what it did for us, and then adding to that what prayer did for me, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the good times and the bad did for me. Sounds really cringe, but the solace and peace that brings, the not worrying and winging it at life, like this, this stuff is invaluable. It's absolutely invaluable to get that structure and not to worry about the whys in the house is, is amazing. And Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that when the human being dies, his deeds end except for free, ongoing charity, beneficial knowledge or a righteous child who prays for him. So what does this mean and what is the point that I'm making? Well, I think it would be normal for non-Muslims or new Muslims who are still learning to come to the assumption that um, once we pass away, our ability to accumulate deeds would end. Um, but through this authentic hadith, we see otherwise. We see that we are still able, one of them being beneficial knowledge. So if you focus on learning and then you share that knowledge with your dependents, with your community, you have the ability to accumulate deeds even after you pass away. This is not a small opportunity. This is major and any wise Muslim would try their best to take advantage of it and it's also a reflection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy subhanahu and when we reflect on why we're here and why we're submitting why we call ourselves Muslims why we're trying to develop in this area we're doing it one because we recognize God and we submit to God but we are also doing it because we want to attain the rewards that he's promised us the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Whoever follows a path in pursuit of knowledge, Allah will make the path to paradise easy for him. SubhanAllah. And I know as living, breathing human beings, it's very easy to forget this part. It's very easy to forget that our time on this world is short and that our time in the hereafter is eternal. A well-known scholar today called Sheikh Saleh al Usaimi describes the happiness of both worlds, the happiness in this world and the next, is based on knowledge. We relate to that because every Muslim should be aware that just by being Muslim, just by recognising Allah, that we have access to the riches of riches. We have knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have access to his words. We have access to his guidance. And inshallah, we have access to his mercy and forgiveness. But where do we start though? What's the first thing that we should have in order before we embark on seeking knowledge? One of the first things that we should have in order is our sincerity and our intention, inshallah. The authentic sources, as well as the scholars, tell us that having sincerity in our actions is the foundation of those actions being accepted. When Imam Ahmed was asked about sincerity, he said, this is what raises people. And this is the thing, how many people, how many Muslims do we see that pray, fast and give to charity, etc.? Many, 
Many do these actions, but not all of them are doing them for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some might be doing it for the sake of gaining validation or a, re a good reputation. Some might be doing it, you know, for monetary gain. Not all people are sincere and it's not for us to suspect and judge. Let me just put that out there. But this is a problem for us as individuals. You know, if we don't have that strong and stable foundation that helps us build, you know, a sincere heart and sincere practice, you know, then we miss out in the gain, which is how sincerity will raise us and grant us success in the hereafter, you know, and will give us kua, which is strength, you know, in the dunya, inshallah. We want that opportunity. And the Sheikh I mentioned before said something really beautiful that I think is very important to understand. He said, the amount of knowledge that you attain in this life will be dependent on the amount of respect and honour that you give to knowledge. The more respect and honour you have for knowledge, the more suitable your heart is for knowledge to reside in. Unfortunately, we live in a world where many people are, are very sure of themselves and very sure of their knowledge and they, you know, lack a humility in seeking knowledge and even gaining knowledge. You know, sometimes we can think we're big shots before we're anywhere near that, you know. So meaning that it's important to give knowledge its proper value and to respect it and to truly see its worth using it to work on ourselves, to be better people, you know, to be the people worthy of retaining it. And the Prophet wasallam said that knowledge is gained by striving for it. And like the hadith I mentioned before, the knowledge you attain and share are good deeds that are going to benefit you in this life and in the next, inshallah. Therefore, we are the beneficiaries. We win if we have acquired knowledge and implemented it because it is knowledge that strengthens our connection with Allah. It elevates our practice, inshallah, brings us surety in our belief and in our actions, brings peace to our hearts. All of these are invaluable things. A scholar said that your attention can only be focused on knowledge by the following three things. One, having eagerness to attaining knowledge. Two, seeking help from Allah when seeking knowledge. And three, not being hasty when seeking knowledge, but rather seeking knowledge in a way that is steady and consistent. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, O you who have believed, when you are told, space yourselves in assemblies, then make space. Allah will make space for you. And when you are told, arise, then arise. Allah will raise those who have believed among you and those who were given knowledge by degrees. And Allah is aware of what you do. So it's important when we are reading the Quran, especially if we're reading it from a translation, but even for those um, whose native language is Arabic, it's important that we look at the tafsir. The tafsir is scholarly commentary that takes into consideration the words of Allah, the authentic hadith, the context in which the the ayat was revealed, the history, the language that is used to give us better understanding of the meaning behind the ayat. So in this case, it is stated, make room, Allah will give you room. This ayat was revealed about gatherings and places where Allah was being remembered. When someone would come to join in assemblies with the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they would hesitate to offer them space so that they wouldn't lose their own space. Allah the Exalted commanded them to spread out and make room for each other. And also Imam Ahmed and Imam Ashafi, may Allah be pleased with them, recorded that, that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, one of you should not remove someone from his place and sit in it, but instead spread out and make room. So taking into consideration everything that we've covered already, 
the path to knowledge is a very, very important one, one that we can benefit from. But it's also a lengthy and a lifetime project, you know, for any Muslim, not just a revert. It is important that we read, that we attend halakas or Islamic courses, we attend the masjids, uh, and inshallah, implement what we learn along the way. So inshallah, by the time this course has reached you, I would have created a Telegram group, which you would have joined, where I'll be able to keep in touch with you. Don't panic if you haven't joined the Telegram group already. Don't worry about it. All the details to that are going to be in the description of this video, inshallah, as well as an email address. And I'm going to give you more information about that in a second but these are the expectations that I have for anybody that commits to the course and the expectations that you should have for yourself inshallah I've wrote here attend every class but what I mean is is watch every video and create a day and a time where you're going to do that in your week inshallah come with a pen and a notepad and preferably we a Sahih International uh, English translation of the Quran now this probably goes without saying but I'm going to say it anyway if you watch a video and you have a question, you can leave it in the comment section below or you can send it through the email that I'm going to link in the description, inshallah. However, disclaimer, it has to be in and around the topic of the video. If it's outside of that, I probably am not going to answer. And it's not to be rude or ignorant, but you can get a lot of stuff coming back at you online, through YouTube, etc. So I'm wanting to avoid that. We're just going to focus on each individual video, inshallah. And rest assured, if you come to me with a question that I don't know, I will take it to someone of knowledge and respond accordingly. Now, because the people who have made it to this stage in the video are clearly the most awesome, homework is going to be given to them. Because homework is not for the faint-hearted, it's not for the weak, it's for the strong, it's for the awesome, it's for the hard-working, okay? So the homework is, is that you need to write down all the sources that I mentioned, all the hadith and Quran quotes, inshallah, and put some notes beside them. But also to summarise this whole induction and what you've gained from it in your own words, at minimum a paragraph. And if you want me to read those summaries, you can send it through the email that's in the description below, inshallah. So I hope you've enjoyed this first video. And also keep in mind that a sign that we are drawing closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the, the increase in our remembrance. And if you fully watch this video, inshallah, that's a reflection of that. So going forward, commit to it. Like I said, make a plan a day and a time where you watch this video. They'll be coming out every Monday at 8 p.m. And if there's anything else that I've not mentioned or missed out that I can help you with, inshallah, get in touch and I will do my best to do that. If I have said anything wrong in this video, please know that that is from me. It's a reflection of me and my limitation and need for knowledge. And any good is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruk wa atubu ilaik. Assalamu alaikum.